<laughs> Y'all look little kids like, whoa, we in the pictures today. The kids may be dismissed to the children's ministry. Amen. They're going to get equipped back there. They're going to get trained up in the ways of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So uh, can I get YWAM to stand up? And can we stretch our hands and, and pray for them? Amen. If y'all want to run up here, y'all can too. But uh, I want to pray for y'all. And also, I, I need one of y'all that's willing to testify. Who's, that's gonna, who's, who's that going to be? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, come on down. Amen. Amen. Everybody said Jeffrey. All right, let, let, let's stretch our hands, y'all. Father, we just thank you for why we're in Boston, Father. Father, we thank you for their hearts that are burning for you, Father. I just speak divine direction over them, Father. May you order their steps along with their stops. Father, may you open up doors before them, Father, that will give you glory, Lord. Lord, I pray that the provisions come in. Everything that needs to come in will come in with an overflow. Father, I speak for more over them. Increase their capacity, Father. I pray that as they go and they travel, Father, and they're doing what you call them to do, Lord. Lord, I just pray for greater. I shut he said, greater is coming. Y'all haven't even seen. No eye has seen or ear has heard what he has in store for y'all because y'all love him. So, Father, I pray a release of that right now, Lord. I speak life over them and camp and dispatch your warrior angels around them on each side. Lead and direct them, Father. Give them a greater sensitivity to your voice. Lord, we thank you for them. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and let the church say amen. Praise God. So, so what why am I about? Hey, man, discipling, going out, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. I'm turned to, I got a little nervous. I got a little nervous. <laughs> man. Yeah, so we go through a three-month lecture phase through uh, a bunch of classes, the voice of God, relationships, uh, the father heart of God, character and nature of God, and all this equips us to step out into the battlefield on the front lines and go out there and spread the word of God of all nations. And uh, we're in our phase right now where we're out, we're doing that. And man, it's so wonderful to be a part of the church and to see the unity and come together. That's when I've been, I've been in the book of Acts and when they came together in the same accord, that's when the masses were changing. And 3,000 of them were saved, you know? That's exactly what it is about unity in the church. That's a beautiful thing y'all got going here. Man, you know the name of the ministry? This is One Accord, yeah? One Accord, One Accord, okay, okay. Uh, amen, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> What's your name again? I'm Jeff. Can y'all add him to y'all prayer list? Yes, please, please. Amen. Please. Hey, it's going to be a battle, brother, but God's called you, Amen. You stay laser focused on Christ, amen? Don't get moved by people with eyes on Christ, amen? And there's no limitations to where he's going to bring you. He's giving you a testimony. He's entrusted you with the testimony, with the expectation that you're going to release that to the masses, amen? Praise God. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Love you, brother. Amen, 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 amen. Okay. What time is it? I'm about to start. I'm about to start in Genesis. Y'all cool with that? We're gonna go to Genesis to Revelations. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Man fell, man messed up, and Jesus cleaned it all up. Praise God. And I'm here to tell you, like he he switched positions with us on the cross. We deserve that death. Amen. So he became us so we could become him. Y'all y'all catch that? He be, he died for all of our sins. So who, I don't know who keeps beating themselves up for what they've been through, what they've done, or what they did, amen. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ died for that. And it did not surprise him. He's the author and finisher of our faith, amen. He knows the beginning from the end. Before there's a problem, God has the solution, and his name is Jesus Christ. And revelations from the foundation, the lamb was slain from the foundation. In the beginning was the word. Jesus was right there. Can I hear somebody say, it's all about Jesus? And if we got his character, when we begin a good work, we have to be faithful to complete. And as this word goes forward, you're only held accountable to complete the work that Jesus started. 
So as this word's gonna give some confirmation to get back to it and put their hands on the plow, it also gives some people confirmation to abort something that God never called them to do, but not to abort and stay, to abort and move, amen? Because now, come on, the Bible is a book of action, amen? Hallelujah. Come on, the Bible says we're living epistles, and epistle is what? It's a letter. A letter does what? Carries a message, amen? And it's made up of several sentences, and a complete sentence has to have a noun and a verb, praise God. It has to have a subject and an action. If your letter's right, Jesus is the noun, he's the subject, and you're the verb, you're the action. Tap your neighbor, say, be about that action. Completion. You know, I, I, as I was going in and about the faithful harvest, and uh, right after that, man, God just began to open up the floodgates. And I was in my bed and I was praying and just to receiving a word for not only for the church, but whoever I could get in front of that can hear it, amen. And then God just began to open up the floodgates. I get a call, hey, Pastor Andy, uh, how would you like to go to California? I'm like, what's up? He's like, yeah, but I was like, how, what, what, hold on, give me some details. He said, we're going to pay for your plane ticket, you and your wife. We're going to cover the expenses at the thing. We're going to cover the room at, at the Hilton. We're going to pray for all of your meals. Like, everything's laid before you, amen. Didn't I tell y'all that in this season, you're going to reap the reward of the seeds that you've sown in faithfulness, while other people are going to re reap the consequences of being unfaithful? But God is a merciful God, amen. So thank God for the grace of God. So maybe you've been unfaithful. Well, today you just need to switch that up and say, I'm going to be faithful from this day forward praise God because greater is ahead and I was telling I was telling my wife and, and, and think I, I got the best mother and father-in-law I might be biased with this in the world you know some people got their horror story I, nah, nah, I ain't got no horror <laughs> but I don't have that horror story amen because we family and uh, they was able to watch our kids but I remember just grabbing my wife and just like and so you know, like, God really wants us there. I'm like, he laid everything out before us. Like he, so I, there's an expectation when you're in a place that you know God wants you to be. And I'm here to tell everybody right now, you need to have that expectation right now. Like, God wanted you in this building today, right now. You could have been at any other church. Then you passed up churches on the way to this church. Some people pass up churches, churches, churches on the way to this church, amen? So you got to know that God called you here, amen? And when you know where God called you, there's nothing that can knock you off your pivot. When I went to Joshua and he was building up the wall, do you know how many people try to get him to come down off of that wall? You know when you start this Christian thing, you're going to have people that's trying to get you to come off of the wall, amen? But you need to set your conviction strong and say, that's not worth me coming off this wall because I am doing a great work. Tap your neighbor say, you're doing a great work. Come on, somebody. You're building right now, amen? Joshua. I was talking about jo Joshua. It's your birthday. Happy born day, brother. Amen? Speak a blessing over Joshua. Amen. Praise God. When I say happy, y'all say birthday. Happy. Birthday. Happy. Birthday. Amen. We can do that. We family. Amen. Happy birthday, Joshua. Happy born day. Amen. So this word completion is cooking up inside me. But when I got over there, I begin to hear testimonies from all over the world, not just the nation. I be here, like, I, wanted, let me, I wrote it down real quick. There's revival and deliverance of government officials in the Philippines, in Thailand, in Argentina, in Nigeria, in Ireland, in UK, and Hawaii. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's something to get excited about. It's not only like the, 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 the officials, the public officials are getting saved. Like in Hawaii, the mayor and the governor showing up to these church events, amen. God is touching them. You know, God places people in position, amen. And when you're in a position and you have a platform, you have influence. So God is touching the hearts of the people of influence, amen, for his glory. See, the news is not going to show you that. They're going to show you everything that's going bad. They're going to show you everything that's going crazy, amen. But I'm not stuck on it news only the good news is what I pay attention to praise God and this is some good news amen 
So as we was up there, we're like people from uh, Minnesota, from, from Philadelphia, from uh, California. Then I, I, got, I got to preach in Philly next month. I got to go into the prisons in Philly, New, New York. I got to go speak into the Bible college. I've never been to Bible college. They know. It ain't like I'm exposing myself. It's like I'm going to miss the invitation. You didn't go to Bible college. Nothing wrong with Bible college. They're going where God wants them to be. But I just got to talk to somebody right now that might feel like, I ain't graduate from high school. I didn't do this. Like, God can't use me. I'm here to tell you, God will use you if you want to be used. If you make yourself available, amen, all he needs is a willing vessel so he can pour into until it fill me up. See, see this piano? You're going to have me singing up here, bro. <laughs> And I, he didn't give me that gift, amen? So as we was up there, they, they, they played for everybody at the conference. It was by invitation only. There's a lot of movers and shakers, a lot of things going on with Transform Our World, amen? Praise God. And, and they played this video for everybody to see. And I just want y'all to see it real quick. It's five minutes because that's what we're going to do February 11th. And I know they said, where's District E? Well, I received, now we're working with the councilman over the biggest district in New Orleans. Then the superintendent, she was there at the show that I went to. So they're getting involved. The superintendent's getting involved. The councilman's getting involved. Other churches are getting involved, amen. And when we go there, we're lifting up the banner of Jesus Christ, amen. So I'm praying that they get saved too, amen. Everybody that's out there, praise God. So, and in the church on Bourbon Street, how many know we soldiers for Christ? Y'all know that? Whoever didn't raise their hand, just go and politely tap and say, yeah, you a soldier too. Amen. A Ashley banned me from buying more for tees. She's like, you do not need more camouflage, Andy. What, what, one time, no, me and Pastor Rashawn boarded the plane as, you know how they call the army first if you're active in military, and we both had fatigues on. And we didn't lie, we went up and it was like, we said army of the Lord, and they let us through, amen? amen. Praise God, true story, huh? Look, he got some of my camera on today. So uh, I, I, I want y'all to watch this video, but on, on December 3rd, we're doing church on Bourbon Street. Like I said, we're soldiers for Christ. Soldiers are strategic. God will give you strategy, amen? So when I said church on Bourbon Street, because I looked at people with signs and all of that, and, and that's not too approachable. You know, people just with these signs and all that, and I'm not speaking against them because people need to know that there is a real hell. But me, God is, could give me a conviction that it's the goodness of Christ that leads the sinners unto repentance. Because there's people out there that don't know Jesus, never heard of Jesus, amen. So we got to come with the love of Jesus. Now there's some people out there that think they saved, you know, and they need to see that there is a real hell. So we ain't talking about nobody else's ministry. I'm just talking about this ministry, amen. Praise God. So when he said to do church, because how many know it's approachable when you see a crowd of people looking at something, right? Because their backs turn to you, everybody's around, people are attracted to people. So when we talk about doing church on Bourbon Street, we're going we're gonna to go forward with the praise and worship. We're going to go with some Christian hip hop. We're going to have some testimony, but it's not going to be all of us around facing everybody else. We're just going to have church. And whoever wants to come can come. Just like whoever wants to come here can come. The door's open and we in expectation. We want to see revival in our city, amen? So we got to be about that action. So I want y'all to watch this right quick. Please. What happens when the ecclesia in a city adopts a block in a low-income area? That's exactly what the church did here in New Orleans, led by Pastor Andy Pellerano, adopted a block, painted houses, cleaned up yards, cleaned up lots, Listen as Andy talks about Paint the Block initiative. Pastor Andy, tell us what we're doing here. No, we could be painting the block in Jesus' name, but we're painting the block in Jesus' name. So we're praying over the paint. We believe it's the blood over the doorpost. Death angel has to pass over. We're tearing down strongholds. This park was, it looked like a forest. They had thousands of syringes all over the floor. They had a false altar made to bear where they would give sacrifices. The lady next door said she would smell decomposing animals every once in a while. Wow. Well, they had a making sacrifices. Slack. They was making sacrifices. And then 
They had all kinds of syringes in the inside, people getting loaded, drawing the blood, not knowing, throwing it in there, but they giving an offering to that demon, which had a stronghold in, the, in, in this neighborhood. But uh, we tear that down in Jesus' name. We come through cleaned up, amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Like we told the people, we ain't come to tell them that Jesus loves them. We come to show them that Jesus loves yes. them, amen. So this is an initiative many different ministries coming together to glorify Christ and said if he be lifted up he will draw all man we've done six baptisms so far right here on the block on Music Street 8th Ward and 8th Ward has a principality in the streets they call it animals 8th Ward animals amen but we come in Jesus name 8th Ward for Jesus amen? yes so right after Pastor Andy talks about the principality of this area this man walks up with this mask to disturb the meeting and Pastor Andy starts ministering to him, and before long, he turns totally around and starts receiving prayer from Andy and the team. Yes. I called him my brother, Lord, because you knew him before he was fashioned in his mother's womb. We tear down every false altar, Lord. Lord, I speak wisdom now. So this man who came to disrupt this gathering took off his mask, received prayer, was touched by the presence of God, and turned around and hugged Pastor Andy. I speak life over my brother and life more abundantly. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. It was amazing to see a group of 50 men and women from a variety of churches coming together as an ecclesia and serving the people on this block. They were painting houses they were cleaning trash in vacant lots. They were cutting down tree branches. They were serving the people and changing the face of this block in the name of Jesus. Then a young man came over, clearly on drugs and intoxicated, drawn to our group and said that he wanted to be baptized and receive the Lord. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? You believe Jesus died for your sins? Re repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died, crucified, and you rose again on the third day through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Coward devil, coward devil, get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I welcome you. Into my heart, into my life. Lead me, and I'll go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, come on. Yeah. 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 An extraordinary thing happened with this young man when he was baptized. Previous to being baptized, he was intoxicated and visibly on drugs. When he came up from the baptismal waters, he was absolutely sober. I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and the free gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, yes. As we began to pray for him, he began to cry profusely as the Spirit of God fell upon him. Lord, we release the peace of heaven over him right now. We'll surround him, we'll be upon him, we'll be in him for the rest of his days. The peace of heaven shall descend upon him and stay upon him right now. Right now, descend. May your kingdom come here on this young man as it is in heaven today and the rest of his days. Yes. Literally, this young man was in the kingdom of darkness, went down into the baptismal waters and came up in the kingdom of light. Adopt the block, what a beautiful day. The Ecclesia rising up, adopting a block in the inner city of New Orleans, painting houses, cutting down trees, cleaning up lots, baptizing the people in that neighborhood and bringing the kingdom of God to a city block. God, glory to God. February 11th, you got an opportunity to come out and be at the next one, amen?
Come on, let's whoo, hallelujah to that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that video was so powerful, but looking at it again, I look at the people in the background, and some of the people not with us no more. One guy was in jail, somebody else in that video overdosed on drugs. Went to the hospital, she was just laying there. I had to tell the people, y'all need to cover her up. Laid hands on her, praying she would come back to life. But I just believe she's in eternal life. Amen. But you can't get caught up on works. Your identity is not in your works. It's not on what you're doing for God or what you think you're doing for God. That is a part of it, but that's not all of it. And you could come to everything and you could serve with, with, with the joy of the Lord, but if you're identifying with your servanthood and not Christ, your works is filthy rags. Amen. We're saved by grace through faith, and faith without works is dead. It's a part of it, but it's not all of it. Because then you could just come here out of a routine and you could just begin to serve out of a routine. And then what happens is, God forbid anything happens and you lose that spot. Your identity was in the spot. No, your identity needs to be in Christ Jesus plus nothing. Amen. Because he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He permits things to happen with a purpose. My God does not waste pain. Everything he does has a purpose attached to it. Amen. You were thought on the Father's heart. He loves you. But you not identify by what you're doing for him is who you are in him amen and being in him he's going to give you things to do amen but you just need to be sure you're doing it unto him praise God hallelujah come on we're talking about completion and I, I, when, when, when I was going in for a landing last week we had part three and I believe we're going to have a part four unless y'all just skipping lunch but say, say, we eating right now. Yeah. Now I see who's really Christians in here. I'm not judging nobody. I'm hungry too. <laughs> Amen. But I was going about, about Peter. Thank God Peter didn't complete what he sought out to do. Man, Peter was wild. Peter rebuked Jesus. Man, uh, in one chapter, he gets it so right, and he gets it so wrong. And I get so much peace by that. Because we talking about Peter was running head up with Jesus, cutting ears off and all of that. Come on, so who, who identifies with Peter? <laughs> <Y 'all too well. laughs> Amen. And he wouldn't have no ears if we was all in Jesus' time, right? But looking at it, like, who does man say I am? And they all went over saying this and that. And he thought he was this. And he's like, you son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Truly, it was from my father in heaven. He got it so right. I would be like, man, I'm just hearing from God. And, I, and you keep reading, keep reading. And Jesus is telling him about how he's going to go and how he's going to die. And then Peter said, you're not going to die. Said, the Bible says he rebuked Jesus. Then one minute, tr truly, you got a connection from heaven, and then the other minute, give ye behind me, Satan. Ooh, we, huh? But, but thank God. So then, so then he keeps reading, and he said, Jesus saying how all y'all going to scatter. And then Peter's right there, man, I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. West Bank translation, I'm going to ride with you, Jesus. Me and you, going, I'm going out there. I got a clip full, and I ain't touching you. We're going to die together if we got to die together. How many people heard that before? Right? And guess what happened? Before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me three times. And he did. And he denied them. But guess what? Thank God. He dusted himself off. He repented. He got back up. And he kept walking. Amen? See, thank God he didn't complete what he sought out to do. Because if he would have, who was going to preach Pentecost? Come on, it was Peter that shook back and got up and said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the free gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Come on, he did a mighty work. But see, God was showing me that you need, that's why it's so important to know who you labor among so you got the vision together. Amen? See, Peter didn't yet have a hold of the vision. 
of what God was truly, what Jesus came down here to do. Like that was a mission that he was on. He had an appointed time. And for the joy that was set before him, he endured even the cross, the worst death, amen. But as far as I'm going to Peter and understanding what a true disciple is, I want to go, I want to run to this scripture real quick. When the pastor says real quick, just, uh, just be cool. You know? <laughs> Luke 14, 26 to 27. In Proverbs 29, it says, you know, a lot of people quote, uh, people perish for a lack of knowledge. But in Proverbs 29, it also says people perish where there's no vision. Okay? Just grab that. That will be your study. Well, I'm doing, I'm going to be here Wednesday for Fellowship Wednesday. So take your notes because I'm going to give you a pop quiz. So Luke, Luke 14, 26 to 27. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, ye, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The world would love, and that's why you got to know your word, right? Because they'll be like, man, that Bible's full of contradictions. You, well, you got to honor your parents, and then in the scripture, he's telling you to hate him. Uh, you know, man, right, 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 you know, they'll go in and they say, all right, so calm down. Let's go into the original text. All right, that's New Testament, so let's look at it in the Greek, in the original language, and let's see what that word hate means. Y'all want to do that? Yes. My seal. Y'all know I make it sound Spanish because I think it sounds more Greek like that, but it, the, that, that's the word, is masio. And it means properly to detest on a comparative basis, hence denounce, to love someone or something less than someone, something else, to renounce one's choice in favor of another. So let's read it in proper context. Go, go, go back to the scripture. What he's saying is, you better not place your mother before him, your father before him, your child before him, not even yourself before him, if you want to be his disciple. Because his disciples is the ones that he gave the commission that have power, dominion, and authority. You want to see the supernatural hand of God, you got to be his... Oh, he got it, she got it. You got to be his... If any man come to me and hate not his father, choosing his father before him, or mother, or wife, or children, or brethren, or sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. I got any disciples in here? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Prophetically, maybe you wasn't when you came in. Just say, I am now. Praise God, no condemnation, we move forward. This is a right now word, this is a, a Rima word, amen. See, Peter didn't grab a hold of the vision. He loved Jesus and he didn't want him to go, but he wasn't thinking about his whole mission is that none shall perish, amen. So he had to become us so we could become him. He had to take upon the sins of the world, died the worst death that they had at the time, amen. Because in Leviticus it says, the life of the flesh is in the blood, amen. He, he's the atonement, he's the blood sacrifice that covered the sins of the world. Can we give a shout out to Jesus? 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Once he grabbed hold of the vision, he was a force, amen? 3,000 were being added. Come on, it was revival wherever they was going, amen? Who wants to see revival in this city? So we talk about completion. Completion is only going to be manifested through conviction. You have to have a strong conviction in order to acquire completion. Because when you begin something, like I said, the enemy wants to battle you, make you think you're not worthy, make you think you're not enough, make you think you can't. He wants to, he, he wants to lie to you. He's the accuser of the brethren. Once you push past those lies and you begin a work, then your brain releases dopamine and endorphins and it's exciting. You began a new work. But guess what? That's going to wear off too. So you got to be in if your conviction strong enough, your conviction will push you past your feelings. 
Your conviction will be, I'm going to get up and be about my father's business. I don't know how many road, how, how long y'all been on the road or where you're going, but your conviction is going to get y'all back on that bus to carry on and complete the mission. Amen. And guess what? As long as we have breath, our, our, our mission is never completed in its entirety because that means he has something else for you to do. As long as you have breath, you have purpose. You haven't fully fulfilled your purpose because you still got breath. So all that means is he got more for you to do. Amen. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Completion, completion. You must have a strong conviction to execute completion. Believe it or not, you already have everything you need to acquire completion. You, look, who, how many of y'all went home and wrote the vision down and make it plain like Habakkuk 2-2 two, two tells us? Okay, y'all got an F. Everybody failed. No Ds? Did you start writing the vision? Who's wrote the vision down and made it complete? One, two, okay, oh, okay. Don't lie, let me see it. Some of you are like, oh, yeah, I did that. I thought you was talking about the other scripture. <laughs> you wrote it down, and what you wrote down should blow your mind because you're called to do something that's bigger than you. It's the high call in Christ Jesus, amen? And one thing the enemy wants to intimidate you and make you feel like, why are you writing that down? You know you'll never do that. Yeah, I won't, but he will through me, so Kyle would devil shut up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. So God was saying, you need to let them know that I've already put inside of them what I want them to do. Amen? And watch this, 2 Peter 1.3. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. That's a shouting spot right there. He's already, he put that inside. You read it, read it again. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. He didn't make a mistake when he called you. By his own glory and excellence, he called you. And guess what? God doesn't do prank calls. The younger one's probably like, what is that? Because, you know, the cell phone. But before the cell phones, and we just act like y'all ain't never did that. <laughs> I got in super trouble. We ain't going to get into that. I was talking about Charles. They had me recorded. Uh, it was just prank call, and then had a lawyer there and everything. Like, yeah, it was crazy. I was young. But anyway, God don't do that. God don't be like, hey, I called you to write this book, and this book is going to impact everybody that reads it. Psych. <laughs> oh, oh, who's this? No, I was talking about that. No, this Bob. I mean Bill. My bad. God don't do that. God is excellent and glorious. If God called you to something, he knows who he's calling because he made you. He formed you when you was yet still in your mother's womb. He knew your name and he gave you a calling, amen. So when God said, I'm going to send you to nations, guess what? He's going to send you to nations. But if you hang up the phone, you won't get the directions to go to the nations. Oh, man, where's the phone at? I need, oh, Pick up the, I'm not dropping the phone. Where's the mic? They didn't got my mic. My mic's not up here. <laughs> Drive the phone. Boom. God don't do that. God don't do that. God knows exactly what he was doing when he picked you. He knows your background. He knows the family you grew up in. He knows the neighborhood you came out of. He knows all of that. And that's why he called you because he placed you there in that family, in that neighborhood, with all of your shortcomings because that's how he's going to get the glory. Come on, who come to glorify God? Pick up the phone because I got to be a good steward. I don't want to step on it. Nehemiah had conviction. Some people stirring up. Y'all getting hungry. Y'all getting hungry. We're going to go to part four. We just had church. Thank y'all for coming. God bless y'all. Y'all want to keep going? Okay, okay. Oh, we got some holy rollers. Let's get it. Nehemiah had conviction. Nehemiah was like you and me. Man, come on. Nehemiah 1, 2 to 4. 
that Hanani, one of my brethren came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem, and they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down. Its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. That's where it started. The conviction. He heard about it, but he had a conviction. I got to do something about this. These are my people. There's no walls. They're open to attack. A city with no walls has no defense against the enemy. They were being penetrated from each end. They couldn't even have nothing. And here he was in the palace, but he had a conviction for his people. That's how I feel about this city. I got a conviction for this city. The city is in ruins. There's no walls of defense. I got a conviction for the people that have no wall of defense. If you don't know your word, you have no defense. Your shield is because of your faith, amen. And that's why I have a conviction and that's why I go. Who has that conviction in the building tonight? And that's why we must go. Build back the walls of hope. Letting people know who they are in Christ Jesus. Net letting people know as it's written what the word says. And that my God will not break a covenant or alter a word that comes out of his lips. He called you and he has geographically, strategically, generationally placed you right here, right now for such a time as this. This is exciting times that we're in. But when I gave y'all the vision about a faithful harvest, I said there was nothing more strenuous than fighting against people with your same jersey on. See, the enemy, Diabolos, he wants to bring division. We got to crucify that division. We got to crucify that confusion. And it's going to happen through communication, knowing who we lay, bro, amongst, because we got to work to do. We can't come down off the wall. Amen? Amen. And if you look... One Accord was a thought on the Father's heart. I didn't name this church. I didn't know what One Accord was. It just jumped off the pages and hit me in my spirit when I first read it. I didn't know all of this. You see in part and you prophesy in part. There will always be a great attack on the name. Amen. Oh, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. You could talk about God all day. Soon as you start talking about Jesus, come on. They don't mock nobody and make fun of them. There's no more, there's no, like, I've never seen an Allah meme or a Buddha meme making fun of. But they got buku of them about Jesus. Who gets mad when they see that? <laughs> We're not called to win arguments. Y'all, how many things I done posted in the Holy Spirit? Like, all right, you got it out your system. You bet not his sin. <laughs> I just wrote all of that. I'm talking about, I got Bible to back it up. I'm talking about, I went, oh, let me get the word, Google this, all right, this is the word, boom, copy and paste here, boom. I got this whole thing, like, oh, man, I'm talking about an AK-47 clip full of hallelujahs in it. That Holy Spirit, you better not hit sin. And sometimes I have hit sin, and he said, now nah, you better delete it, okay? So I want to get to a part to where I don't have to delete, so my conviction's strong enough to not hit sin, amen? amen. Praise God. Your conviction got to be strong. The enemy's trying to wear out the saints. No, come on, we got work to do. So that's why we got to stay filled. That's why we got to stay in the presence. The worship was so awesome, right? But look at, looking past it, God, there was a reason God continued the worship like that. Because you need to know that you have victory in your worship. That it's not about who's preaching up here. If somebody's up here, guess what leave? They're going to be preaching the word of God, and it doesn't matter who it is, amen? He used the donkey in the Bible. If you're hungry, you'll be filled, amen? If you're looking for a certain person to preach up there, then you missed it. And I used to be like that. I used to be like that. Like when, when I was going to White Dove, I had Pastor Mike wasn't preaching. I was like, oh, man, who is this? Now I'm, I'm just being transparent. And now all that's doing is the enemy trying to choke the seed before it could go forward. Because now I'm looking at man. No, 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 no. After that, it doesn't matter who's preaching. 
You talk about me knowing the Bible, you talking about this, I'm going to pull this from it, I'm going to pull that from it, amen. I got a buffet table right here, I'm about to go home and eat. Baked potato with cheese rolling off the side of the plate. Oh, yeah, I'm hungry. We're coming in for a land. <laughs> Nehemiah had a conviction. Do you have a conviction? Yeah. Look, God gave me this. True conviction leads to repentance. True repentance requires action. True actions produce results. True results lead to completion. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let, 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 let's say that together. True conviction leads to repentance. True repentance requires action. True action produces results. And true results leads to? Leads to? Leads to? Leads to? So where are you going? Completion. Somebody said Jesus. Jesus is completion. God is completion. 360 degrees is complete in its existence, no beginning and end. It just keeps going, amen. I believe he's alpha and he's omega, right? So that means if he's God of the beginning, he's God of the end. So that means he that began when you started, the same God is right there pushing you so you can finish. He don't switch up. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise God. And you got to pull off of that knowing that even though I'm feeling weary in my weakness, it is you that is made strong. And what's strong is the word. So if I know the word, I can pull strength from it all day. Amen. Or the enemy will come at you with the word. And I'll say, but it also says this. Amen. Because what he's going to do is pull it out of context. Context is everything. Praise God. Who's ready to, who's ready to complete the wall? They started strong, amen? Come on. Some people in their walk started real strong. Started strong, had fresh fire on you. Started strong with a conviction to do the work. Some, some way you got distracted. You say yes to Jesus. You got to continue to work. It takes work. Soldiers got to go through boot camp. Soldiers got to go where they get deployed to. Amen. They don't get to pick the battle. They don't get to say, I'm going to sign up, but only to go to Hawaii. You're like, well, you ain't ready to sign up. What you think this is? What do they call that? A timeshare? <laughs> and that don't work. Yeah, some of y'all know. No, there's no rooms available here, but we can send you here. You're trying to go to Hawaii, you trying to send me to Philly. Nah. That's what the enemy will do, but that's not my God. Amen. Amen. So look, they started strong, Nehemiah 4, 6. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its, its height. For the people worked with all. Let, let's read that out loud. Can we read that together? So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height. For the people worked with all their heart. And that's where the attack comes even greater. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Nehemiah 4.10. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. And there's so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. They got in their feelings. We need to get out of our feelings. We need to move in the spirit. You say, yes, you're the priest king of your house. You're the husband to your wife. He, called, he, he joined y'all together, amen. You're the father to your kid. He made you their dad. Even if they're not talking to you right now, you need to know who God is and you need to know that he's faithful. So you need to do the natural with an expectation that God would do the super. You began, he's called you to complete. There's something great that he wants you to do. He doesn't make mistakes. He don't just make people just to make them. And every part is just as vital as the other. Whether they were the ones putting their hands on the wall. And one scripture said that they had the hammer in one hand with the sword in the other hand. Because they knew the people was coming. But they was not going to stop the work. They were just ready for war. Amen. Some of you put your Bible down and that's your sword. And you begin to do the work. Pick the sword up. Because the enemy is going to come even harder the more 
that you do because he doesn't want you to complete the work because in the completion of the work, the Lord is glorified. The enemy don't want the Lord glorified. Do y'all know that? Philippians 2, 2, make my joy complete that ye be like-minded together in one accord. See, the enemy knows he's defeated, so he's after the Father's joy. Come on, somebody. He's defeated. Say, he's defeated. Oh, say, he's so defeated. In Jesus' name. Discourage, discouragement is a disease that can infect those that open themselves up to that conversation. The enemy will always try to distract you from completion. The enemy's the power and prince of the air. So when he starts coming to discourage you, and you begin to come into agreement with these thoughts of discouragement, you just came into agreement with the enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to tell you, you just spend all your money. The rent's coming back. The rent ain't gonna miss. Oh, the light bill's up 50%. How you gonna pay for the lights? No, no, no. He, he began a good work in you, amen. He supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Like the word is still the word. Get focused on the word. Stop entertaining the conversation. The carnal mind is enmity to the spirit of God. It will never agree. You need to say, even if I don't see, I know what it is, amen. I know he's going before me. I know he's going to provide, amen. I see the ravens flying in the air and they clothe with all them feathers. How much more my father going to close me? Come on, somebody. I remember when, when COVID hit and all everything was going on and I was in the backyard and the, the birds was just chirping away. I'm back there on my face. Do I open? Do I close? What if somebody gets COVID? Da, 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 da. But I'm hearing from God. He said, no, don't close. You got 1.4 acres. Do a drive-in. I've never been to a drive-in. Well, you get to go now. Yeah. Amen. And, and as I was in prayer and I heard the birds chirping and flying, he said, now when those things start falling off the sky everywhere, <laughs> just get ready. I'm coming. Amen but they're still chirping away, amen? So that means your needs are still gonna get met, praise God. And guess what, when it stops and the skies crack, he's just coming back for you, for you. And that's why the church will always be under a great attack because this church is moving and shaking, amen? Judgment starts in the house of God. You know why? Because the devil already has the world so he needs to get the ones in the church that got the potential to reach the world. Amen? So we need to grab hold of that conviction. We need to complete the work that we started. Amen? Who, who am I talking to in here? Look, 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 look. Nehemiah 6.2. That Sambalot and Geshem sent to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So look at Nehemiah. Look, they, they, they're trying to get him off the wall. They're trying to tell, they plotting against him. They're trying to lie. They're trying to do this. They're trying to do that. They're trying to stop the word because they heard that it's progressing. So Nehemiah 6.3 says, So I sent the message to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? Oh, write the devil a letter, y'all. Tell him I'm not coming off this wall. Oh, you on a high horse? I ain't coming off this high horse either because I know where I'm going, amen. I'm not coming down. I'm not stopping, amen. I'm coming to church. I'm coming to intercessory. I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm hungry, but I'm not eating because I'm fasting. I set a conviction, amen. You got to know that you know you are not coming down off of the wall. You've been called to complete a good work, amen. And it's not only you counting on that work. It's those in your oikos. It's those that are around you. It's your family. It's your friends. It's the ones that you love that are still lost. They need to see the Jesus inside of you. They don't need to see the hate and the judgment. They need to see the great lovement. I made that word up. We made that word up. We didn't come for judgment. We come for lovement. Miss, I know it's not a real word. <laughs> he had a strong conviction. Do you have a strong conviction? The wall got completed when everybody said what they couldn't do. Amen. Haggai, in the book of Haggai, they didn't have a strong conviction. They stopped construction of the temples. They said, we need to build up our own houses. And then everything they did came up short. They were so, and the locusts would come in. The Bible says it was like they had holes in their pockets. They didn't have a strong conviction. So God had to break them down to get them back, to return back to the work that they started. And then until they completed it, the blessing wasn't on their life. Amen. 
I love so, so many of you. You need to know that you at where God wants you to be at. I see, I see people come back that, that leave, and guess what? I still be the same. Still be there to agree. Why? What's that? Give them a hug. Come on, we got work to do. Let's move forward. It takes humility to do that. Amen. And I honor humility, praise God. Because when you humble, God is faithful to exalt. Amen. We got a work to do. God has called us to it. Tap your neighbor. Say, he called us. So we got to work. It's work called. We got a little bit more time. Man, I'm hungry. <laughs> Oh, you know how I was about to start calling out what I think I'm going to eat and everything. It'd be a real spiritual battle up here, amen? You got to have a conviction, y'all. Look, and you got to complete. What, I, what if Joshua, what if they just would have went around that wall six times? Hey, hey, can, hey, was it a good, did that sound like a good idea? Come on. We're going to go and walk around this wall for seven days and then we're going to let out a shout and play the thing and, and we're, we're going to overcome. And you got to think, they said the warriors, the battlers was there and he had to tell them, look, you're going to walk around. Seven days, it wasn't just seven times, it was seven days, right? So that means every day the warriors had to come back to the tent and their wife like, what happened? We walked around the wall. <laughs> they warriors. They want to go to war. They ready. They got a conviction. We about to take this land. And you're telling me just walk around this wall? I could just imagine the conversation in the tent. Come on, women. Y'all know how y'all are. That's all you're doing. You could have cut the grass. You could have helped me with the laundry. <laughs> yeah, you're walking around the wall. Come on. Can we be real? You got to make it come alive because it's a living word. Amen. It's not just an awesome story like it's real life facts. Amen. They went around. They went around again. They abided by the instruction, amen? Come on, they believed Joshua had vision, and they rolled forward with the vision, amen? And they went around that thing, and they went around that thing again, and they went around that thing again. Some of y'all getting dizzy just by me talking, but I'm here to tell you, don't get dizzy, keep walking. Keep going around. Abide by the instruction. Keep your eyes on the Lord, amen? Grab hold of the vision, amen? Because we're going to take this city in the name of Jesus Christ. We're not just doing paint the block just to paint some houses. I'm not a good painter anyway. I'm not, that's not nothing I thought of. Hey, a church on Bourbon Street. I ain't never with the church on Bourbon Street. That's nothing I thought of. I'm just being obedient by the instructions. With a conviction that these people need hope. They have no walls. They don't know who they are. And I got the keys. Come on, so say, I got the keys. Say it like you believe you got the keys. So we got to go out and set the captives free. We got to be about our father's business. We got to complete the work that he called us, that he started us to do. Amen. Praise God. I'm going, I'm going to go into Paul 4 because I don't want to just paraphrase, paraphrase this next one because I want to give you some, some instructions, some further instructions as the Lord is telling me to do. It's not about I'm hungry. I can pray all day. I'll just be playing with y'all. Amen. But I want you to be focused. Amen. Because we're not just doing this just to have another Sunday service. Amen. We want to grab hold of these tools so we can move forward. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent taken by force. We need to be about our Father's business. Amen. So you know if you need strength in your conviction... I want you to come to this altar right now. I'm going to speak some strength over that conviction. I'm going to speak vision over you. We're going to break every yoke of bondage. We're going to pray for time. We're going to pray for balance, amen. We're going to pray that we put our hands on the plow and we complete the work that he called us, that we started. Amen. All right, people still moving. Come forward. We're going to pray for a strong conviction. We're also going to pray for revelation, for God to reveal. Are you in this work? Because if you're not... Let me start what else, what other thing that you're calling me to do. Amen? Maybe, maybe you moved on impulse, amen? Maybe you moved led by feelings and emotions. Sometimes, and sometimes it's good to take a break, go back, sit down, get fed, regroup, write it down. All right, God, what do you want me to do next? Just don't get complacent, amen? Praise God. People still moving. People still moving. Go ahead. Y'all know how we do it here. Tap your neighbor. Say, come on, I'll walk up there with you. They ain't going to know if it's you or me, but we'll go together. There's an anointing up here. This is just putting feet with your faith. This is putting some action saying, I receive and I believe. Amen. This is an outward expression. Praise God. 
Okay, people still moving. We also going to do, we start everything with a declaration of faith. Praise God, people still moving. So if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, right now is the time to do that too, amen? Right now is the time to do that too. Praise God, praise God. If you never publicly declare Jesus Christ as Lord, this is your public. Come on, right now, come on, move. People still moving. Come forward, come forward. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We start everything with a declaration of faith. Because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, then you too will be saved. Amen? So we say this with our heart, not just with our mouths. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Jesus, we believe believe that you died, died, crucified, crucified, and you rose again again. on the third day day. through the power power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Coward devil, Get under my feet. You have no authority. I have authority through the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, I repent of all my sins. I rededicate my life to you, Lord. I welcome you in my heart, in my mind, in my life. Have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray and let the church scream, amen. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that just went forward, for the worship that just went forward. Father, I pray that the word went forward as a seed and it fell upon fertile soil and it shall produce great fruit. We rebuke the devourer. We come against all things that are not of you, Father God. We come against that prince and power of the air. He cannot steal a seed that went forward today. Father, we speak your word and we speak your truth. I pray for an increase of Holy Spirit conviction. I speak wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, Father. I pray that you will have your way in all of our lives, that you will lead and direct us from glory to glory, and we will not grow weary in well-doing, and we will put our hands to the plow, and we will complete, we will finish the race, Father, that you started. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and let the church scream, Amen. amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now we gotta go out and be bought our Father's business.